what they can bring to the historian's workflow that perhaps traditional methods can't is really the speed and the, the, the detail. Traditional approaches would require years of training, access to specialized libraries, resources, but even the most experienced scholar can't process all of the existing data. We're talking again, 170,000 mm. texts. Today, we're going to learn about how technology is being used to date ancient scrolls, including the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were discovered in the 1940s and have had academics debating ever since exactly when they were written. Well, I'm joined now by the historian and epigrapher, Dr. Thea Summershield, whose work involves using machines to help us uh, help us better understand the ancient Mediterranean world. Uh, Thea, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you very much for being with us. So what, what, what can AI do for us here? How can AI help us uh, date ancient inscriptions and documents? What does it do? So we're talking about text written on stone or papyri or even just everyday objects from the ancient world. And they really hold key information about the history, the society, the language of these uh, ancient civilizations. However, much of these, many of these documents are fragmentary. They've been damaged or moved from their original find spot. We don't know who wrote them or when. And this is where AI can help. AI involves teaching machines to learn patterns from large data sets, which can then be used to classify data, make predictions, even nowadays generate new content. And to bring this back to ancient texts, this means that AI models trained on digitized corpora of inscriptions or ancient documents can be used to then extract features such as language patterns, letter shapes, dialects, personal names, which can then be used by the model to fill in gaps, date texts, uh, define authorship, and many other tasks. So for something like the Dead Sea Scrolls, is there enough of a, I'm probably using the wrong word here, but enough of, sort of a, a corpus of, of information that it can compare with? Can you, is, there a, is there enough language to build the large language model? So the, for the Dead Sea Scrolls, you would be able to, uh, um, to refer to other data sets, so uh, other uh, repositories of text written in, for instance, ancient Greek or Hebrew, et cetera, to be able to build a comparative uh, data set. Right, okay, wow. So you, you, you've got to sort of compare like with like and, and hope it learns. You yourself, you've worked on AI models which help uh, restore and explain ancient Greek inscriptions, including a model named Ithaca. Uh, Ithaca? Ithaca. Uh, t Ithaca. Ithaca. Ithaca, good. Uh, tell us about that. So uh, this is work that I co-led with Yanis Assel back in 2022. Ithaca is the first AI model for restoring, dating, and placing ancient Greek inscriptions. These are three of the key tasks in a historian's workflow. We trained it on, you were asking about data sets before, for ancient Greek inscriptions, we have this enormous data set of 170,000 digitized inscriptions. And this is the data that Ithaca was trained on. It then uses a state-of-the-art AI model called architecture called the transformer to produce restoration, so to fill in the gaps in the Greek inscriptions, as well as predict the date and the place where they were written. Right, okay, but I mean, obviously, it I mean, uh, sorry, it obviously can't tell us stuff that, that, that isn't already, that we don't already know. It, it can't give us, like, facts and details that weren't already held in, in, in information we had before, presumably. So we are talking about texts for which uh, we do, these are, have been very well studied, but what they can bring to the historian's workflow that perhaps traditional methods can't is really the speed and the, the, the detail. Traditional approaches would require years of training, access to specialized libraries, resources, but even the most experienced scholar can't process all of the existing data. We're talking again, 170,000 mm. texts or spot every pattern uh, across different places and periods. The data set we used ranges from the 8th century BCE to the 8th century CE. So it's not really about discovering new things, it's about giving providing historians with these powerful accessible tools to support their work tell us about some of your findings then using using ethica what have you what have you come across so for restoring ancient texts in terms of really accuracy how this model can uh 
what its what its value as a tool is. When it comes to restoring ancient texts, Ithaca can restore them, fill in the gaps with 62% accuracy. For geographical attribution, it can uh, attribute text to their original location with 71% accuracy, and it can even date text to within 30 years from the ground truth ranges proposed by historians. However, and really most importantly, Ithaca was designed, we designed it as a complementary tool to aid historians. So we actually measured this. So when we gave Ithaca to evaluated historians and asked them to restore some text using the model together, uh, they managed to achieve a 72% accuracy. So their accuracy tripled, and it even surpassed Ithaca's individual performance on the same task, which really confirms its value as a historical research tool. Can AI help us to determine authorship of, of, of documents that are, for whom authorship is unclear? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is actually already being worked on several ancient scripts and languages, uh, not just Greek literary texts, but also ancient Chinese philosophical works. Um, Authorship doesn't, however, necessarily mean identifying like the single author or authors of a text. It can also be used to isolate scribal hands. Uh, they're the difficulty lines between distinguishing between variations in one writer's style and similarities in different writers' styles. And this is, again, a task where AI can really help us. Has it thrown up any massive surprises that the evidence provided by using AI has, has, has led you to conclusions that you simply wouldn't have come to otherwise? So with regards to the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, I think, again, I was, I was not involved in this research, but I find it Particular, fa particularly fascinating. I mean, the what they've uh, the, the discoveries they've made of the uh, moving the dating of these uh, scrolls is is incredibly impactful for the discipline. Uh, what I found particularly inspiring about that research was that it the team incorporated collaborations between paleographers, physicists, chemists, and computer scientists, which is a real strength and allowed them to bring this new sort of the novelty of the, the method really in integrating radiocarbon dating with AI handwritten analysis. So now that we have the tools, if these tools are then made open access and given back to the historians, that's when the uncovering new uh, historical patterns and events can really start to happen. And look, this is almost certainly the wrong metaphor to use, but what's the holy grail here in your discipline? I mean, and what's the, what's the thing that you're, you're crying out for AI to do that it can't quite do yet, that you're really, really hoping is just around the corner? That's a really good question. I mean, it's so I happen to specialize in sort of uh, archaic and classical Sicilian texts, specifically cursed tablets. And you wouldn't say that that is necessarily uncovering the mystery of Atlantis or what <laughs> have you. Uh, hi ancient history really works in these sort of areas of, of specialism. So what, what keeps me up at night, these Sicilian texts, is going to be different from what another historian specializes in. And it's that level of specialism which is really the key here. So I'd rather see it as see... AI being used for the study of ancient texts is uh, to uh, respond with another metaphor as like as micros microscopes and telescopes have extended the range of what scientists can do and tools like Ithaca for instance and AI, other AI mm. models are really augmenting our capacities to study ancient history whatever our specialism and interest might be.